Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the month. Oh yes, it's back and it's bad. It's time for the MPJ Rock Album Review. I'm your host Nigel and welcome to my wonderful panel today. To Dave, to Chris, to Will and to Simon. Welcome gang. Hey, Good morning. Crack it on then. What's the show all about? If it's your first time, well, if it's your first time listening, like and subscribe if you've listened before. Why haven't you liked and subscribed if you haven't done it? Um, so we pitch two album, brand new rock albums together, um, and we say which one we spend our hard-earned money on. Uh, but more importantly, we'd also rate them out of five. And if they get into more than twenty out of twenty-five, they get into our hall of fame. However, they might also. And it's coming up. It's only two more, two more months. This month and next month to go before we hit the album of the year show. Um, and kind of working out, guarantee a spot in the shortlist. You need to score twenty-two and a half. And then, if you don't, you might get a wild, wild card pick from one of the beautiful gentlemen. Um, not just here, but from the other show um, as well. So, who we got up first of all? Uh, we have the mighty Royal Blood and Back to the Water Below, uh, their new album, and uh, Stained. Oh yes, I'm sure we're going to have lots of jokes about Stained today. Um, and they are a brand new album. And, and this album has been very much delayed. Um, so I think it was originally on there um, back in July. And it's eventually come out, Confessions of the Fallen. So, well, if you don't know Royal Blood, who are Royal Blood? Royal Blood formed in Worthing in March 2011 after Kerr met uh, original drummer Matt Swan. The band were initially a trio consisting of Kerr uh, on vocals and bass. Joe Dennis on guitar, Matt Swan on drums. Dennis left early 2012 leading the band to discover what is now their signature sound. On May 23, Robert announced the singles of Mid Mountains of Midnight would be released on, on May. Bloody, bloody, bloody. Here it is. It's your, uh, it's, um, well, it's back to the water below. Now, who looks more like a fish? Hmm. Who could be rising out? Or maybe like a titan from the water below. Well, there's only one titan here, and that's Simon. Simon, rise up, my friend, like a titan from the bottom of the ocean, and let me hear your dulcet tones on royal blood. Eh, it's okay. <gasps> <laughs> um, <coughs> don't go overboard, will you, mate? After that yeah. show up, that was your that was your one analogy, that it was okay. Yeah, That's what you get for calling him a fish. I know, right? I agree with that, Nigel. Honestly. Well, I changed right. it to Titan. A Titan of a fish instead of a fish, mate. Titan of a fish. So, yeah, so um, the sound is that kind of like very muddy bass heavy. And I, I just, the entire time I was listening to it, it just sounded like it was a tribute band for Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, a lot of the tracks just sort of blurred together for me. Uh, the Firing Lane and There Goes My Cool stood out the first time I listened through to it. But I, I think it's just not my preferred style of music. I'm not saying it's bad. Um, but it, it, that was an uphill struggle for me from the start for listening for that one, and and it was fine. It, like musically, there's nothing bad with it. I don't think it's it's just not the kind of stuff. Like I'll listen to it; it's fine. But it was never going to wow me. So, yeah, technically it's good, but I just don't think it's for me for Royal Blood. Will now talk about Titans. <laughs> Old uh, what about them? Old, uh, who is the god of water? What's his name again? Poseidon. Who? Simon. Uh, Poseidon. Poseidon. <laughs> Simon. Yeah. Poseidon, yes. Poseidon, that's it. Are yep, you Poseidon with your trident? Will you slay this album or not? Oh, uh, well, fun you should mention slaying it. I mean, it's, it's a Royal Blood album, isn't it? It's... I'm... Unfair because I've I've never really been a massive fan of Royal Blood, and so to me there's nothing different listening to this than listening to one of their older albums. To me, it's 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 inoffensive. You know, it's it's not unpleasant to listen to. They, they play well, but for me I can I can't really thinking back. You know, pick out any particular songs from the album because it would just like sounds it was blurred into one for me, and it's it's inoffensive. It's you know. Really bland for my taste, and yeah, yeah, it's raw blood, isn't it? My god, <laughs> oh my god, do we have a raw blood fan in the house? Let's find out. Chris, you're on mute. New mistake, come on. <laughs> he's, he's new to the show. And... Look, 
It's not like I don't work with computers every day or anything. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes, um, you've kind of come to the wrong person for a Royal Blood fan. I mean, uh, as both of them have said, is the, is it a bad album? No. Is it a great album? Also, no. But it was entertaining enough. I was able to, you know, I've, I've put it on a few times. Excuse me. Put it on a few times. I haven't listened to Royal Blood before, but I will be listening over their back catalogue because they were entertaining enough. But it's one of those ones that I think it fits into the, you know, you put it on as background music when you've got other things that you're doing and you want something in the background that is nice to listen to but won't get in the way. Um, as the guys have said, you know, there, there aren't any major things there to to, to pull out as standout songs. Um, yeah, I like Firing Lines. Uh, and as, as uh, Simon said, uh, there goes my call. Uh, it was a good one. But um, yeah, nothing stands out as groundbreaking or you know, something that I will be coming back to time and time again as a, a particular song or a section of the album. So it's good. It's good. But it's not great. So yeah, that's where I sit on this one. Dave, you're my last yes. hope. My last hope, <laughs> Obi Wan. My last hope. I mean, well, this is, I mean, this sort of music is kind of up my alley. I do like the sort of blues rock sort of thing. And I did find this very enjoyable. Um, I enjoyed it a lot more the first couple of times I listened to it um, than um, I did in the end, because it, it's got a very unique sound with only sort of the bass and the drums. And I found it quite interesting, a lot of the, the way that they kind of compensate for the fact that they haven't got guitars and the effects that he's using on his bass. But once that sort of element the first few times you listen to it that kind of wears off and then you're just left with the album and it's at the other side it's you know it's, it's not bad it's not a bad album it's not a great album um i would pick out some highlights uh shiner in the dark and tell me when it's too late really enjoyed those um it drops off towards the end i feel um but you know it's enjoyable you can listen to it and it's it's yeah inoffensive as someone else has said so angry so angry with you so angry with the Lord of you. How could you How could you not praise the mighty royal blood to the heavens? Uh, well, me and Trish are tandeming on this one um, in terms of the voting. And, and we both absolutely love the album. In fact, our tickets already booked a couple of weeks going down to see them in Portsmouth. Cannot wait. Um, so for me, two years ago, um, before we kind of started rating albums when I was doing it, Medicine, um, sorry, Typhoons was probably my album of the year. It was outstanding. It was fast. It was furious. It was absolutely amazing album. Um, is this as good? Yes, but in a different in a different way. There's no two ways about it. And actually, it did worry me because they they they've slowed it down. There's no two ways about it that they've slowed down the tempo. The first three songs, which I love. Uh, Mountains of Midnight, um, Shining in the Dark, Pull Me Through, absolutely back to where they were. And then and it's interesting that they picked out the bluesy rock side of stuff because that there was none of that in the previous album at all. And the rest of the album kind of slows down in comparison to what their, their normal style is. They're normally far more up-tempo, and I think they've tried to do something a little bit different. And it does take a little few listeners to actually get in and appreciate how good it actually is and you've named some of the songs out there which are some of the slowest too and they definitely experimented more with that kind of blues rock ever which i've never heard from them before and what was it as good as typhoons well typhoons would have been a 10 for me do you know what i mean so it was just out out it was just a stellar album of the year um and i thoroughly enjoyed this album and but it did take i must admit first couple of listens i'm going oh this isn't typhoons oh this is nowhere near as good um but yeah you know, i think by the time i listened to it four five six times i really did appreciate it so it's more of an appreciation album for what they're trying to do rather than just rinse and repeat um, typhoons. I think they've done something a little different, and I think it's a real grower for me uh, as an album. But yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Absolutely loved it. Can't wait to see them in concert. And I think it adds something different to the catalogue, which I think as a band you need to do uh, from that way as well. But um, I wouldn't say it's, I, I appreciate it's you. You got to cut into that. You got to psych into their type of sound as well. So it is. It is, a, it is different out there. I, I don't think it's Queens of the Stone Age at all. Pa, pa, yeah, I throw that back in your face, Mr. Rising from the Water. I didn't say it was them. I said it was a tribute to them. Oh, well, same thing, <laughs> isn't it? If it's a tribute to them, it sounds like them, surely. But uh, anyway, um, I think they have your own unique style. But anyway, right, okay. Um, 
Who are they up against? Well, they are up against Stained and the Confessions of the Fallen. Who are Stained? And why did it delay the album so long? Well, I can't tell you that. But um, Stained are an American rock band from Springfield, Massachusetts, formed in 95. The original line consisted of lead vocalist and rhythm guitarist Aaron Lewis, lead guitarist Mike Bushak, bassist and backing vocalist Johnny April, and drummer uh, John Wozniak. The lineup uh, uh, has been uh, stable outside of 2000 departure of Wozniak, who was replaced by Cy. Gyra Selly and Stain recorded seven studio albums and now they are back with Confessions of the Fallen. So, Will, let's start with you then. Let's uh, let's you you are one of the fallen angels of the rock world. Will, let's hear your confession as far as this uh, album is concerned. I I must confess with all my my dear heart and all my emotion. This is pretty good. That's pretty cool. I've um, I not to my knowledge at least. I've not come across Stained before, unless I've sort of listened to them in playlists and not realised it's them. When I've listened to you know the generic, two uh, thousands rock metal y playlists, which I often find myself listening to, but I just don't really pay attention to who the bands are because it's just co- it's just really cool music, and this is just really cool music. You know, um, a cycle of hurting and um, that was a fantastic song of the um. Uh, the cheeky bit of growling and screaming in the middle of it. That was very pleasant. And um, I can't remember what it's called, but the ending song was um, to me a really good um, way to finish off an album. It's just it's just really solid. It's obviously, from my bit of read I did on them, it's very reminiscent of that early 2000s, late 90s, hard rock, sort of quasi new metal sound, which obviously from their being from that time, it's, it's their sound, so that's what they are, which is very cool. Uh, yeah, this is just a really cool, solid album. It brought me much joy, and I think it should continue to bring me joy. It's the ones I've added to my playlists. I, I always bring me joy, William, obviously. Um, now, let's bring more joy to the scene, um, and let's go to the joyous Chris, who, if he remembers to unmute himself, perhaps. Oi, I've got my finger on the button this time, so it's all good. Um, <laughs> I know. <clears throat> um, you, you've come the wrong way for joy, I'm afraid. So, I I have to start off by saying, Stained have been doing this for a very long time. As Knight says, they've got seven studio albums, and they do what they do very well. The downside to it being, I put Stained in their own kind of genre of death rock, which is sitting around, moping, waiting for my own, and possibly trying to accelerate my own death rock. Um, <laughs> now, for those that like Stained, great, absolutely. They are a, a, they're a great band. They play really well. They have done great things. I haven't listened to Stain since I was at uni, which is around 20 years ago when Will was born, um, and with things like Puddle of Mud, uh, which, you know, Puddle of Mud was, I, I, I think I had the same initial reaction to it as uh, to Stain as, as Will did. Puddle of Mud was good until I realised, oh, hang on, these are all quite negative songs. I'm feeling a bit negative. Oh, this is a bit... <laughs> anyway, yeah. So uh, over the course of 20 years, they've possibly changed their, their sound and then gone back to what brought them to the dance in in that but unfortunately that then means that they've gone back to stuff that kind of just makes me a bit depressed so this one wasn't for me um there are so you know, e- even better days better days is the, the, effectively the a the more positive sounding of their songs towards the end of the album and even that is just kind of oh well it might get better maybe let's just sit and wait and see whether it does <laughs> oh look let's sharpen my blade no um so it it's a good album but it's not for me. So what you're saying, lyrically wise, is depressing. A little bit, yeah. Okay. That you know, kind of, you know, from the, the stuff I generally take from it is you're either going to listen to it because things are going great for you and you want to remember what like real life might be like, or things are going really badly for you and you want to feel someone who's worse. Um, <laughs> generally, that's that's what I take away from from Stained, and whether that's just an old prejudice that has come back out in this album, or whether it's just the way it actually is, I don't know. But that's that's where I get to it. So, yeah. Wow. Well. Some people say our next panellist is quite depressing when he waxes lyrical. I say he brings joy. Let's find out, shall we? Dave! Oh, there's going to be no fucking joy here. <laughs> um, so, uh, I don't know how many of you will remember. Some of you will, some of you won't. But early sort of 2000s, late 90s, when music television was still a, a sort of a big thing, um, you had some music channels where you could... You know, you could phone in, you could request songs. So, you know, that's times you would get songs that would repeat. 
Uh, Stained had a song called Outside, and I must have heard that song so many fucking times in the early 2000s that I really had to try not to have any sort of prejudice when listening to this album. But it's uninteresting. It's depressing. It made me want to hurt myself. No redeeming qualities whatsoever. Um, I couldn't wait for it to end. I could only stomach it the once. This band just needs to disappear and go away. I've had enough of them. Every time I hear the name, it just makes me shiver now. It's, no, it's not good. Oh, oh, what controversial shit you're going down. Uh, talking about controversial shit. Simon! <laughs> oh, dear. So, <laughs> Break the Cycle is like one of my all-time favorite albums uh it just purposely uh, perfectly encapsulates my teenage years so i did have a lot of trepidation listening to this album because obviously it has been a long time they have got a lot of albums um lowest in me track from the album is like pure synthesized stain the vocals is rich and emotional as i remember them being um his voice isn't quite as gravelly as i remember it being listening to some of the older tracks but it has been like 20 years so first fair um was any of it real and in this condition show that the band are experimenting a little bit with their sound but they never really stray far from exactly what they've always done which is you know it's difficult with the band with this kind of legacy um hate me too and cycle of hurting are just absolutely fantastic tracks um i appreciate this album is not for everyone or for many people even um and it's definitely not for every mood as it really is just dripping in angst and emo stuff but um i can't help but love it (laughs) um maybe it's just nostalgia talking um maybe i it is actually a good album for me but um either way it's in my happy emo place which is a weird thing to say considering the album but <laughs> yeah i just I, I can't help it i just love it <laughs> wow okay well i am brand new to state brand new not heard them before not come across them before but maybe a bit like will i might have heard them on a playlist something but not taking much notice of them so this was kind of um this is kind of and I'm somewhere I think in the middle, but more edging towards uh, Simon and Will. I, I enjoyed the album. I thought it was really cool. Uh, I thought it was brilliant sounds. Yeah, I didn't like some of it. Got a bit too angsty for me, for my taste, um, and a bit too like growling and, blah and all that crap. You don't need it. But I I must say I was saying yesterday when. Um, was an album that actually has made our shortlist for album of the year, and I, I think I'm going more to that this year. I think the year before, you know, symphonic power metal was my new buzz. I think sort of like melodic kind of death rock, kind of. I, I'm really kind of tuning into that a little bit. I really like it, and this was in terms of musicianship and 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 composition was 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 a cut above. It was terrific. Um, uh, so, uh, was any of it real here and now, out of time? See, I don't really tend to t- read too much. I like to hear what the lyrics are, and I like to understand, but I tend not to get too emotional about them, so I didn't really get into that. Oh, right, they're singing about that. Oh, that's all emotional. I like I like it when they put the emotion into their vocals, which I think he did. I, th- I enjoyed it. I thought it was a really cracking album. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and I would certainly listen to the game. Obviously, um, uh, yeah, you know, it's not as depressing as Chris and Dave, but I liked it. I thought it was really solid. Right, but where? And this looks like it could be a close run thing here. Who were we going to spend our money on? Will any of them reach our the hallowed turfs of the the, the 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 Hall of Fame? Doesn't sound like it, but let's see, shall we? Um, right, Royal Blood. Then, um, so um, Simon, uh, we started with you. Let's start with you on the votes. Then, uh, giving your votes for Royal Blood. I said it was okay, so 2.5? 2.5. Will? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a very inoffensive 2.5. Chris? It's a 3 from me. And Dave? Yeah, slightly better than that, 3.5. You've redeemed yourself slightly. Well, shock of shocks, me and Trish, 5. Five for me and uh, we absolutely love it. Can't wait to see the concert. Uh, my daughter's birthday. She's coming back from uni. We're all going. Can't wait. So that's uh, 10, 16 and a half. I mean, it's solid. It's solid, isn't it? Should be more, you you, you, you heathen Jew. But let's find out. Which one are we going to buy? Let's go with Stained then. Will, uh, Stained? Uh, four. Four. Chris? Uh, it's two for me. Uh, Dave? 0.5. Uh, 
Oh, I've, written, I've written the naught. Yeah, I did you. <laughs> I made you go half by the sound of that from that side of things. Simon. Oh, it's five. <laughs> five from Simon! And a four from me. Um, so it was pretty solid. Uh, I would buy Royal Blood. Uh, Chris would buy Royal Blood. Um, Simon would buy Stained. Will would buy Stained. And Dave would buy Royal Blood. So Royal Blood takes it. But in terms of scores, 9, 13, 15, 15 and a half. So, yeah, three to two to Royal Blood and uh, a 50 and a half a stain, which is a solid score, mainly because um, Dave got rather depressed um, and couldn't get over his, um, his his that one song. But there we go. That's that's life solid <laughs> scores. Um, and we spent our money in Royal Blood. Thank you very much, guys. Um, right. Well, that's the end of the show. Thank you very much. Uh, keep on rocking out there. And if you liked and, and uh, you like what you listen to, see what you listen to, I don't know, whatever, hit the subscribe and like button, share the love, check out all our wonderful album reviews on our YouTube channel and also um, all the amazing interviews that we uh, that we currently have with up and coming bands. It's not just the big guys we do. We uncover absolute gems out there as well. So thanks for listening. Goodbye, everybody. Keep on rocking. Thanks to my crew. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye all. Thanks, Bye. Bye.